Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. What makes a good robot attachment? So if I ask my team to make an attachment for a hook on a robot that's going to be able to pick something up, this is kind of what they would come up with. They would basically come up with something that looks like this. I don't know if you can see that well, but basically a row a motor that's kind of sitting off in space like this that's basically pinned in with one little uh, pivot point here and something that sticks out like this. The whole thing looks like it would fall apart if you breathed on it. That's kind of what kids on, on our team would, would come up with right away if given that task. Basically because that's kind of what they are exposed to as to what machines look like but that's not the way people build industrial machines so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is how do you make something better than this uh, and the key things we're going to talk about whenever we're building something a couple of key points we want to use squares when we build things we want to build things that are easy to attach and detach from our robot and we want to make things uh, that are solid and we want to use two points of attachment for everything. Uh, so I'll show you a better way to do something like this. We're gonna make something that doesn't look like it came out of some type of Dr. Seuss book or something like that. We want to look something that looks more like a real world machine. So let's look at this uh, picture here. Here's a picture of uh, the Truffula tree chopping machine from the Lorax. So this is what a lot of these FLL machines look like that uh, the kids create. So if I said I need a machine that cuts down trees, this is what they're gonna make. They're gonna make something like this. It's got this like really spindly arm with all these little spindly looking chopping mechanisms on them. So they would build something like this because this is probably what they've seen before. Right? This is kind of what they're familiar with. But something like this, it's not strong. It's not going to work very well. This is not what industry would build. Okay, so how about this here? We've got a nice uh, big industrial tree chopping machine. So this is what would actually work in reality. And this is what we want to try to build when we're building our FLO robots. We want to have something that looks like this not something that looks like it came out of the Dr. Seuss book. So key points here, here's a bulldozer, big industrial machine, so a bulldozer. Uh, so we wanna emulate something like this when we're building our machines. So bulldozer, this thing, that's gonna move up and down. And because of that, what are we gonna end up with? We need two points of rotation so one point, one point, you'll see any kind of industrial machine, if it's gonna do that, it's gonna have at least two points that pivot. So if we're gonna pivot something, we're gonna have two points. So it's gonna be symmetrical like that. Probably also a pivot point here, and one on the back side over there. So you wanna build stuff that has two pivoting points like that as well. Uh, you'll also notice everything is built in squares. So, this is a nice square shape here. Nice square shapes here. Things like that. Nice, so two big points here. We got two points of pivoting and nice square shapes. This thing looks very solid. That's the thing, kind of thing we want to emulate. Okay, so here we're gonna look at a couple of good attachments. Uh, so key things here. So first of all, we'll look at this one here. So this is going to be just our kind of general bulldozer uh, move something around. So that we could use this for the wishing well or the sludge or anything where you need to push something into place. So basically it is just a square kind of bulldozer type thing. Uh, key things, we're using lots of squares, nice solid construction. This is pretty Strong. It doesn't look like I'm going to break it. Lots of squares. And my key point on my robot that I'm going to use here, this little square frame here, one of these pieces, we like that shape to try to mount things to. I'm going to use two points of connection. 
to these two pins here that you're going to click in. So two points of connection and basically easy on, easy off. So I can put that there and click, snap that into place. And you can see how that is now a robot that is capable of pushing something and positioning it into place. I can snap that on quickly. I can remove that quickly. And that is very strong when it's on there. Another type of attachment here, let's say we want to do something like the filter mission where we need basically something that extends far off the front of the robot to push something or actuate something. Here I built a pretty simple attachment. Once again, lots of squares, nice and rigid, two points of attachment. Once again, we're going to go on here, click down into place. There I have extension off the front of the robot, something that's nice and solid to push with. But I can do that. So easy on, again, nice and easy off. I can make those changes nice and quick. And the last one I'm going to show here is some type of lifting mechanism. So this is one that I built. So it has the motor basically a small motor. It's all built up once again on one of these square frames. I have a good gear set up there. Uh, I'm avoiding the temptation to put this directly on the motor, uh, but if you do that, that's not so bad. But once again, two points of pivot. So whenever we're gonna pivot something, we wanna pivot it with two pivoting points. So you can see how that Basically has two pivoting points there, gives it stability, and I have a good method here of attaching this to my robot. So I have two guide pins here. I'm holding the camera, so I'm doing this all with one hand. But basically two guide pins, and I can basically pop that onto my robot, and that is nice and solid on there, and that basically will move up and down with that motor. So one thing I'm doing here, I'm putting that attachment on. I need to connect it in over here. I'm going to snap that in. So I'm plugging that into port A to run my small motor on port A. And you can see that is pretty solid in there now. And I can use this to pick up objects like for the pipe removal or pipe replacement. I could use that attachment for that. And if I pull that off of there, and that comes right off again, nice and easy. So my robot has lots of attachment points on here, lots of different surfaces I can attach to, so that makes a good robot that way. Lots of different attachment points. It would be nice if I could actually keep the small motor permanently attached to the robot and just interlock to it. Uh, with some type of gear mechanism. Uh, Builder Dude 35 has a great video on dog gears, as he calls them, and how you can just clip uh, attachments right into a gear system. Uh, I did not do that here, but I'd like to expand this one further and figure out a way that I can make that work instead of actually changing out the motor each time. In our competition last year, we had an attachment like this where they had to plug in the motor and a motor actually came unplugged and then a robot wouldn't run during the competition and they had to figure out what was going on and they lost probably about a minute trying to figure out what was going on there so it was a pretty disastrous uh, uh, run during that part of our competition but there's some examples of gears sorry of uh, attachments what makes a good attachment